This is the hat that I made for Burning Man this year. Um, simple sun hat with a couple LEDs, and rather than blink annoyingly like so many things do, these ones slowly fade in and out. Now I'm going to show you how to make this hat, but before you go grabbing an Arduino and saying, hey, I can do this, let's just hang on. It'll only take a couple dollars to make the circuit, and you won't need any sort of computer device or anything like that. It's all analog electronics and it runs off of a 9 volt battery and that lasted um, all the Burning Man um, without any fading so um, why don't you read the instructions and I will show you how to make this here is the first circuit that we're doing this is a simple circuit that turns on a red LED you can see the red LED in the foreground. It looks kind of like it's glowing white when I look at it through my camera. And this basically takes the current from the positive side of the 9 volt battery seen in the picture over through the positive end of the diode. Then it comes out the negative end of the diode into a 470 ohm resistor. And that resistor is connected over to the negative terminal of the battery. So it forms a current loop and it turns on that resistor. Now we're going to try to hook up the multimeter to see if we can measure a couple of um, properties of this circuit. For example, I want to look at the voltage drop across the diode. Uh, red LED voltage drop should be about 1.8 volts. I'm going to look at the voltage drop across the resistor um, which we would expect to be uh, uh, about 7.2 volts. Uh, uh, 1.8 plus 7.2 equals the 9 volts of the battery. We're going to find that those numbers aren't exactly right. And then I'm going to want to look at the current um, through the uh, circuit. Um, we're going to expect to have about 15 uh, milliamps going through the circuit uh, based on the resistor. The resistor is regulating the voltage using the equation V equals IR, in that case V, the voltage drop across the resistor, about 7.2 volts, equals the current, about uh, uh, 15 or 16 milliamps, times 470 ohms, the resistance of the resistor. So let's see uh, if those numbers work out. You can see here I've hooked up the multimeter probes so that they're going across the diode. That means I haven't removed anything from the circuit, but I have the two probes hooked up, one to each leg of the diode. And if I tune my multimeter to voltage, you can see 1.78 volts. So it is indeed about 1.8 volt drop. Okay, now I have hooked up the uh, multimeter probes to each end of the resistor. This will let me look at the voltage drop going through the resistor. Um, which I said uh, should be in the range of about 7.2. And if we look, we have 7.55. So 7.55 plus 1.78, which was the voltage across the diode, that adds up to more than 9. So we know that our 9-volt battery is providing a little more than 9 volts uh, across the, uh, 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 to the circuit. Uh, and this is pretty typical. The voltage of the battery is going to drop a little bit as it as it uh, uh, loses power, um, but uh, it's not exactly nine. Um, and we're going to find that in in all the components. There's a little bit of leeway and error. Okay, now I'm going to measure current through the circuit. And if you notice. I've actually disconnected the circuit. You can see the red wire, which was going to the diode, is now going into the red probe. Um, and that red probe brings the current in through the multimeter, and then the current passes back out through the black probe into the diode. So in order to measure current, you actually have to break the circuit and let that current flow through your multimeter. Now that means if it's a high current, you're going to want to uh, make sure your multimeter can handle it. In this case, we're only expecting about 15 milliamps. Uh, diode should, uh, this type of diode should be limited to a maximum of about 20 milliamps. 
So that's fine, our multimeter can handle it, any multimeter can handle this. And we see 16.3 milliamps. So, so our circuit is working as predicted. Okay, here's our next circuit, and this is a basic RC circuit. So what do I have going on here? Well, I basically have uh, a wire, which is currently hooked up to the negative terminal of the battery. That's going into a resistor, which is a 22 kiloohm resistor. And then the resistor is connected up to a capacitor. The capacitor is 100 microfarads. And that 100 microfarad, the other side of that capacitor, is hooked up to the negative terminal of the battery. So right now, it's, there's no current going through this. It's, it's, there's no potential across it. Um, you have both sides hooked up to the negative end of the battery. And I have the multimeter set to read the voltage across the capacitor. And if we look at the multimeter, here we are, zero volts across the capacitor. Um, nothing's going on yet. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to basically take the wire, the red wire, and move it from the negative end to the positive end. And when I do this, I'm going to look at, I've actually slightly tapped it, I'm going to look at what happens to the multimeter. So I plugged it in, and you could see the voltage is rising. So, but not immediately. It goes up to about 9.3 volts, which is, which is about what our 9 volt battery is providing. So here is the circuit. Uh, what's happened here? Well, the, when the potential was increased on one side of the resistor, the capacitor didn't immediately increase to the same voltage. It kept, it kept a zero voltage potential across it. And current basically flowed in through the resistor and began increasing the potential across the capacitor over time. How long did it take? Well, the time scale is given by the um, resistance of the resistor, uh, 22 kilo ohms, times the uh, uh, capacitance of the capacitor, 100 microfarads, um, which works out to be of approximately two seconds. So the time scale of that change could be measured in seconds. As we saw on the um, voltage uh, uh, meter, it, it took a couple seconds for the voltage to rise. Now, the, the way it rose was an exponential function, um, so it, uh, it slowly rose over time. So anytime we think about slowing currents down or making things happen or slowing voltage changes down, we should think RC circuit. So now I'm going to just disconnect this positive end. Notice the, the voltage, it's, it's starting to go down. Um, it's kind of leaking out. Um, but it doesn't really have very, very much places to go. If I hook up the negative terminal, then we'll see the voltage drop more quickly. So if I hook that back up to negative, the capacitor will swiftly discharge use on the same time scale that it had before, a couple of seconds to discharge. And we can keep doing that. So if I move it back to positive, then the voltage will increase slowly over time. And if I move it back to negative, the voltage will decrease. So this is the key circuit to our slowly varying um, uh, uh, LED. We're going to need to have an RC circuit involved in there. Okay, here's the third circuit in our demo. So what have I done here? Well, I've hooked up the RC circuit we had before, and I've put in a, a green wire that connects that RC circuit directly to our LED circuit. So this is, this is how one might approach trying to make an LED fade. Um, they just say, well, I have this circuit that, you know, the voltage was varying slowly. I'll just put in at that point between the capacitor and resistor a little wire that connects it to the positive end of the LED. 
Now if I, and I've, I've got the multimeter still reading the voltage across the capacitor. Now if I try to increase this, well notice the, the, the LED comes on, it's fairly dim, it came up pretty quickly, and then it kind of stopped, it didn't grow really super bright. And if we look, we'll notice a 1.74 uh, volt drop across the capacitor. So that's that's not how high it went last time. Last time it went up to about about uh, uh, nine volts when we hooked it up. So what's going on here? Well, unfortunately, the current takes the the sort of path of least resistance, and in this case, once it hits about 1.74 volts, it's easier for the current to all just basically flow through the green wire into this circuit. Now if we disconnect this, we'll see the capacitor doesn't really discharge, it immediately goes off. So the path of least resistance is through the green wire once we hit 1.74 volts. The capacitor and, and that part of the circuit, it really isn't uh, doing, doing much. It actually is acting basically like the capacitor isn't here at all. Okay, here is our fourth circuit, and it's starting to look kind of like a bundle of wires. Um, the schematics are on the website and a little bit easier to follow, but what I have here is on this side, we have still the basic RC circuit. We've got a wire going in, which is currently connected to the negative end of the terminal, going into the resistor. That resistor is connected up to the capacitor, and that capacitor is connected up to the negative end, uh, negative terminal of the battery. Now we also have this green wire. That green wire is going into the positive or non-inverting input of the op amp. So the op amp is connected by a black wire to the negative terminal of the battery, a red wire to the positive terminal. That provides the basic power for this op amp. And this is an LM358 op amp. We could give it uh, anywhere from, uh, uh, I think, just a few volts difference up to about 30 volts difference. It runs really well with 9 volts. You'll see the orange wire is actually connecting the output, which is um, on the, the left side of the wire, orange wire, to the inverting input, which is the right side of the orange wire. So this is called uh, negative feedback. Um, in this case, uh, a lot of times there's a resistor on, uh, in there um, if you're going to amplify, but in a voltage follower you just connect the output directly to the inverting input. Um, and so the output of that op amp is going to be at the same voltage as, or very nearly the same voltage as we get at the green wire. Now, what does this do for us? Well, the op amp has a high impedance input, meaning current does not like to flow through that green wire. It'll just basically measure the voltage. Now, current does like to flow out of the op amp, at least some current, about 20 milliamps uh, uh, maximum. So the brown wire here is also hooked up to the output, and that brown wire flows into the positive end of the LED. And then the negative end is connected to a 470 ohm resistor which is connected back to the negative terminal of the battery. I still have the the volt, voltage meter leads hooked up to the capacitor so let's see what happens when we hook up the input to the positive lead of the battery. So I hook it up and the LED actually fades on slowly. We can look at the voltage. The voltage increased slowly. The LED fades on in a couple of seconds. And if we switch it down to the negative terminal, we'll see the LED fade out. So the op amp basically acts as a buffer. It isolates the RC part of the circuit on the left from the uh, LED part on the right.